If you're in construction, I think you know pretty well that delays are an absolute huge part of construction. Getting delays wrong can and oftentimes does lead to catastrophic failure on projects, ends up losing money. And today we've got a training that will walk you through everything you need to know when negotiating your contract to make sure that you've got the delays part covered to make sure you're going to get paid for your delays you make sure it's very clear on who gets paid for what it's very very important it's probably one of the most important contractual things in your contract that you need to be aware of when you're signing a construction project make sure you listen to this and implement it into your business so for those of you who don't know me my name is Kian Brennan I'm the CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions and the reason we make these videos is that there are so many construction companies out there losing money hand over fist on simple mistakes that they make a little week here and there in their contracts or if they know what risks they're getting into they can make a lot more money so enjoy okay guys so let's talk about delays and extension of time so firstly a delay is something that happens obviously on a, on a construction site that you've been delayed and the extension of time is the mechanism in the contract to extend the pc date so you get an ex you're supposed to complete the contract by a certain period of time now you've got an extension of time because you've been delayed. Okay, so delay is the delay. Extension of time is the mechanism within the contract that you can actually extend the PC date. Okay, so let's go back to pre-award. Let's, let's, let's get our bearings. So you're invited to the bid on a project. You got their, their tender documents, which included their contract and their scope of work. You negotiated the terms and conditions you've uh, you know negotiated your price and you've signed the contract right within that contract that you've signed right you've got the instrument of agreement terms and conditions the scope of work the pricing schedule and the appendices right now what we're talking about today the delays right there is a there's a clause for extensions of time right that will ha that's in the der terms and conditions that will talk about the mechanism right how do we extend time however what's important here is in the terms and conditions is a definitions section that's where we need to look okay now we need to find out what the definition of a delay is and you can have really different types of delays you can have um an excusable delay and a compens uh, compensable delay or sometimes it's just called a delay okay um and this is defined in the contract this is a delay where you can get paid now, there's two kind of different types of delays. The first one is delay number one is um, you're going to, you're delayed and we're going to pay you for it because of your delay. The other one is you're delayed and we're not going to pay you, right? So the first one, excusable delay, comp compensable delay, anything that's defined in a contract, these are the delays that we're going to pay you for. These can be delays that essentially, because of the delay, you've been impacted and it cost you money and it hasn't been your fault, therefore we're gonna pay you for it. An example of this is you went, you didn't get access to site. So you went to, to, to start working and there's another subcontractor where you're supposed to be working and you can't, you can't work, it's not your fault. Um, because the client uh, has engaged a subcontractor, it, it is essentially the client's fault that you don't have access to where you're supposed to work and therefore, you need to be, you're going to be delayed because you can't work and also you need to be paid for your delay because you sent out two guys or three guys or five guys to do work and equipment and you, you're you not going to get paid for it because you didn't do any work, okay? So, two essentially, two different definitions of delay, an excusable, compensable delay or one that is not compensable, you're not going to get paid for it. Now, what are the actual types of delays, right? Uh, we have the big four delays, out of anyone's control delays and economic delays, okay? So let's just go out, any, out of anyone's control delays and the economic delays first, okay? Because they're, they're important, but they're less important, right? Out of anyone's control delays is typically you don't get paid for. You just get time. You don't get time and money. We will always try to get time and money, but most of the time it's just time. Now we're talking about... And COVID stuff, pandemics, epidemics, wars, strikes, force majeure type events, um, which are acts of, acts of God or something that you couldn't reasonably have foreseen. These are things that are considered, um, you know, uh, a delay that you're probably not going to get paid for. You're just going to get time. 
Then we got economic delays, which are material delays, material shortages, and resource delays. So this will be this will come into the contracts that you've ne negotiated. Who, if you get time or you get time and money for them, so they're difficult because a lot of times you can explain to the client, hey, look, you know, we can't get these materials because of the market. Full stop. Which means that we're going to have to do something else. So let's work on something. Um, okay. And then we got the four delays. So the first one is delay in getting access to site. So a lot of times you're working on a site with lots of different subcontractors. And then you go to work on, a, on, on, on an area that you're supposed to work on. It's supposed to be completed prior to you getting there. Not be completed. Or there's someone else there and now you, you can't work. Or... You know, the client has delayed jobs, right? Because of, you know, not giving you access for whatever reason. That's a huge one. That's one causes of delays, okay? And if that's your client's fault or if it's a contractor on site, that is also your client's fault. So to get paid for it and your extension of time. Next one is inclement weather, bad weather. So again, this is one of the big four delays and we need to figure out who's going to pay for what and what's included. That's thing we're going to talk about in a second. Site condition and latent conditions these are the same thing right so you come on site and you've been given the site to working on and then you that you didn't expect to find so I'll give you an example if you were a, a road company right and your job was to build a highway um, um and so you go and you start digging the you know you start digging and then you all of a sudden you find rare snails or rock that was way you know you can't you can't dig as deep as you wanted to, to dig because of this rock that wasn't expected to be there they're called site conditions and latent conditions things that you they can do a bit of testing here and there to try and figure out but more often than not they don't know everything that's going to be in the ground you could have remains you could have unexploded remains it could be anything like that but again we don't know who's going to pay for that and we don't know um, if you're going to get an extension of time for that or not. And these are things we need to figure out. The most uh, difficult one um, is document inaccuracies or discrepancies. Typically what happens is your client in the scope of work will give you a scope of work as written out and also drawings. Now what can happen is you can price things up against these drawings, but they could be wrong or they've made mistakes. A lot of times these contracts these days are saying that those the, those things that are wrong or mistakes, you, you you can let them know at the time or you're going to take those delays or, or mistakes on board, which is highly unfair. OK, so document inaccuracies, discrepancies, it could be you could go to an area based on the on the on the drawing and it's just be completely wrong. This happens all the time. So who's going to pay for those delays? Because it's going to delay you for sure. Who's going to pay for them? OK, so. The impact of delays. Now, we, the, the, the key things here, we got the construction program. Construction program starts when you're awarded a contract and ends at the PC date. What we're talking about is the PC date, the practical completion date. Any delay should push out the PC date. Okay? Um, and so in on the construction program, the delay that you've had should be the construction program should be revised to push out the PC date. That's all we're talking. The reason the PC date is so important is because every day after the PC date that you don't complete the work, you're going to be hit with liquidated damages. So that's why it's so important to push out your PC date, get your accessions to time if you've been delayed. Now, there's something that you need to know. There's something called a concurrent delay. Concurrent delay is a delay which... Is, is, is a genuine delay. You have been delayed. There's no no one's you know saying that you haven't. However, it doesn't actually impact the construction program to push out the PC date. Because whatever that delay was, was on something that was not relevant to what's called a critical path. Something that is absolutely necessary to make sure that happens in a specific order. Your delay might have been a delay that was unrelated. Could have been a deliveries delay that doesn't actually imp impact the work and doesn't actually uh, impact the PC date. So that's something to know. So oftentimes the clients will come back to you and say, that delay is a concurrent delay because it's not related to what's on the PC. Um, it's not related to uh, the critical path on the construction program and therefore it doesn't push out, push out the PC date. Therefore, we don't need to give you an extension of time. Something to be aware of. Okay, so now if we look at the EOT process, very simple. There's going to be a delay. You've been impacted with a delay. You have a time bar to submit a notice, and then you have a time bar to submit the EOT, depending on what is in the contract. If you don't comply with those time bars to submit your notice or your EOT, you won't be granted the EOT, and you'll have to take on the burden of that at your own cost um, and also your own time. 
So now you've submitted your notice of, of delay and you submitted your EOT. Now it's either approved or rejected. If it's rejected, you can submit a notice to dispute or you can try and renegotiate it or whatever they've asked you to do. If it's, approval, if it's approved, then you're going to get um, a, an extension of time or whatever way they, they, they change the contract. Um, and then that will push out the practical completion date. Okay. Now let's move on. What's the problem we're trying to solve? We don't want to take the risk of all of these delays. Sometimes it's super ambiguous as to who's responsible for what type of delay. Um, you also don't know how much you're going to get paid or how clear it is in what type of delay. And the notification periods for submitting your notice of delays um, and also the EOT can be tight and therefore you don't submit them on time and then you lose money. Now, what are we going to do about it? So, first of all, we want to ensure you're not taking the risk for big four de delays and you're happy with the other types of risk. Okay, we're going to try our best to negotiate that you don't have to, you know, you're going to get paid time and money for all of the delays. But the big four delays are the key ones that will cost you the most amount of money. Now, it's specifying how you're going to get paid for these things can be difficult. If you've got rates in a contract, how you're going to price them up, all of that sort of stuff. Because sometimes we're talking about project management costs because you have to keep project managers on for longer and your management team. And that can be difficult. So the best term is to just want to get paid actual demonstrated costs, costs that you can demonstrate which tends to get approved and then tends to get these things moving a little bit a little bit quicker. And then we want to change the notification periods to be five days. That will make things uh, much easier for you to comply with the contract. And that's it. Let's go.